Michelle here. Welcome to my plant stand. I have this Vitzjo, I think that's how you pronounce it, and unfortunately it's become kind of a casualty of neglect. What I thought I would do in this video today is I would show you what my neglect looks like. That it's okay if you don't pay attention to your plants for a couple of weeks. It's not going to be the end of the world. The plants will forgive you, so to speak. As much as it may be uh, a little embarrassing to show you the amount of dust and dead leaves on this shelf, a lot of us have struggles. We have struggles with physical health, we have struggles with mental health, and sometimes taking care of our plants becomes a burden rather than a source of relaxation. I want to say that I have this happen too, and I feel the same way. So let's get started. is I'm going to clear off each shelf one by one and then I'm going to clean it and I'm going to go from there. I have these little uh, peperomia cuttings and it looks like they've rooted. Here are some cronyana cuttings I took. It looks like they've rooted pretty good. It looks like they're starting on secondary roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these in water until I can go ahead and take some time to add these to the main plant. <laughs> this is uh, a skindapsis I got. It's actually just in a little nursery pot. As you can see, it's got some roots sticking out of the bottom of the pot. It's got some water still in the pot. Uh, seems to like that. It's got a new leaf. Got that at the local nursery seems to be pretty happy with me. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with skindapsis. Because I underwater, they tend to really curl up on me. And this is kind of a the one of, oops, one of the banes of my existence. Um, this is all that's left of uh, what was once a very large Hoya Bella. These look like they're well rooted. I will put these back in here and save them for later. This is a Hoya Crimson Queen. Unfortunately, it came out with an attack of false mites right there. You can see the damage. I've sprayed this with a commercial miticide several times, but it's produced a bunch of white leaves and it's done nothing else. It was the first Hoya cutting I ever got way back in 2019. So it, it takes a special spot for me. Little thing I gotta clean. Okay, this is kind of a surprise one to me. This is my Crinkle 8. And she's just been hanging out, but look. She surprised me and she's blooming. And she pretty, she's just starting to open up. And yes, all the rumors you heard are true. It does smell just like chocolate. So this is in like a, it's in a self-watering pot, but it doesn't have a wick. It also has a peduncle right there. This one's really grown on me. I got this as a very small cutting, about three leaves, four leaves. I got this as a single string of hearts silver glory strand. I've been propagating it ever since. It's finally got to the point where I can begin to make it a plan of its own. I think it's long enough now. So the, the roots are really good, so. And the last plant on this shelf is this peperomia. I'm going to have to put the name on the screen because I always confuse it. There's there's two. There's one that I'll show you in a little bit because it's on the third shelf. 
but then there's this one and it is has a thinner stem but the leaves are very similar but this one grows in a more bushy pattern and it grows more upright i do know it's a pepperoni because i have seen influences yeah here's a here's an influence so i know it's a peperomia and not a dishidia now i'm going to go ahead and clean the shelf i'll go ahead and do this and put it on uh, fast forward so you don't have to watch it. Okay, I got the first shelf done. I think I'm gonna go ahead and clear all four shelves off all at once. I'm going to take off the plants one row at a time but I'm going to not put back all the plants until after I've cleaned the entire shelf. I think that way I'll be able to place the plants as I like. Let's look at shelf two. Shelf two is kind of sad. I have this peperomia right here. And honestly, I'm not sure if it's gonna survive. This is a peperomia, I'll put the name on the screen. Um, this is the one that has the pink edges around it. Um, it is wet. Um, I, I, I think it's a goner, honestly, because the so I underwatered it and the soil was really dry, so the plant wilted, and then I watered it, and the soil is wet, but the plant is still wilted, which to me indicates rot. I'm going to put that to the side. I don't think I'm going to put it back on the shelf because I have to look at it and see if it's going to be able to be saved. This used to be my Alocasia Green Dragon. Unfortunately, I underwatered it and all the leaves crisp off and died. And all that's left is the corn. The corn feels good. The roots are still good. So I'm just going to leave it as is and see if the plant regenerates. It should, the corn is good. So I'm gonna leave this. It's not the most attractive thing, so I'm probably gonna hide it until it starts uh, forming new leaves. Whoops. This is my very unruly Hoya Carnosa. This started as a very small cutting from a friend. This plant is in Lekka in a pot and the roots look really healthy. I don't see anything wrong with the plant. It looks like it's acclimated to Lekka really well. Um, it's got an enormous root on this side right here. I don't know if you can see that root. It just keeps uh, being unruly and shooting out vines. This plant also did have flat mites I sprayed it, it recovered, it still got some damage, but it's grown all of this since treatment. So I could cut off all the stuff with damage and just start over with a new plant, but I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm gonna leave it as is right now. I run into a little bit of a problem because this, cutting that I have right here has grown into this cutting right here. That happens sometimes when you have vining plants too close together. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go ahead and break it. I don't really want to. It has a very large root ball right here, so that's probably a good place to break it. These are regular string of hearts that I keep in this glass just as kind of a decoration it's hanging it's well rooted as you can see the water needs to be changed obviously it's just for decoration i have i don't know maybe three or four string of hearts around the house speaking of which this is one of them this is a silver glory cutting that i got from a friend for a gift it is unruly and unwieldy and I don't want to cut it, but I need to cut it. As you can see, it stretches down to the floor. 
it's in pawn, and it's funny because he has the largest root ball ever. This is all solid roots. I've never seen so many roots on a string of hearts before. This thing is as, as root bound as a Hoya would be. I had to put that somewhere out of the way where I could let it lay flat. These are Skindapsis cuttings that I grew from wet sticks. I love Skindapsis. I think they're so pretty. So when I get them growing well, I like to kind of spread them around. This is my Hoya Yeti. This has variegated and non-variegated all in the same pot. This Hoya was an extreme casualty of flat mites. I'm gonna be honest with you because that's what this video is about. If you wanna see what really severe flat mite damage looks like, because I didn't know what was going on and I didn't know what I was looking for, but flat, extreme flat mite damage looks like this. Do you see that ball? That ball right there is mite damage. All of this, all along this stem, is mite damage. This whole plant is basically like that. It's growing again. It's been treated a few times with a commercial miticide, tetrasan and minx too. Two miticides, one targets the eggs and one targets the adults. So the mites are gone, but unfortunately the damage remains. And because it's growing again, and because the damage is literally everywhere, it's either throw away the plant or keep it as is. Because I can't really take cuttings because the mite damage is pretty much on every node. So it is starting to grow again. It has beautiful tendrils such as this that are brand new and have no damage whatsoever. So I'm hoping that as it heals and it grows, I'll be able to take cuttings and restart the plant, but it's gonna take a long time. We're a little lower, so we're gonna go ahead and work on the third shelf right now. This is kind of a ragtag shelf. This right here is my Hoya Bella Vida Bois. The leaves feel very firm now. This stem is especially thick. So I do believe that it can be repotted at any time now. These are some Hoya Australis Lisa cuttings I have. Uh, got a dead one. I will be sweeping the floor later. Some of these were flat mite damaged plants. Some were not. So at this point, whether I keep them or not, I haven't really decided yet. But as for root growth, they are doing quite well. So let's see if I can put them back <laughs> in the vessel. Probably not. As you can see, what I'm talking about is on the back of this leaf, right there, there's mite damage. Um, on the stem itself, you can see some scabby brown growth. It's not infected with flat mites. It just has cosmetic damage at this point. So whether I keep it or not, have it decided. This is kind of a casualty. This was some really pretty pothos cuttings. And I apologize I'm putting everything on the floor, but I am cleaning up at the end of this video. It's not jo just going to be thrown on the floor and abandoned, in case you were worrying. I'm just picking off 
all of the unfortunate looking parts. Okay, I think I got everything, but I need to change the water. These are just some regular pothos cuttings, just some, some cuttings. Uh, there's nothing expensive or rare in this plant shelf at all. Uh, these are just some plants I enjoy. The bottom two shelves I'm going to go ahead and do from on the floor. The first plant I have is this little Ripsalis. I've had it for quite a while. It was almost a victim to neglect, but uh, Ripsalis actually can go through a lot. And it's recovered, it's growing a lot, it's got a ton of new growth on it. This is a little euphorbia that I have. Um, I can put the name down at the bottom of the screen. Um, I like euphorbia. I have about a mm, two and a half, three foot tall one uh, behind the camera by the window. I got this one because it is a cutting that has sprouted a whole bunch of arms. So as it grows bigger, it's going to grow into a really nice, beautiful, big uh, plant. So that's why I have that. So it's only here temporarily till it outgrows its spot. This right here is another plant that means a lot to me. This is my jade plant. This was given to me as some very small cuttings from my dear friend Tabitha. She shared it with me from a plant that was given to her. I have taken some cuttings as you can see, like right here I took a cutting and it has uh, given me new growth. There was a cutting right here and it has grown right here as well. So I have repotted it a couple months ago. So it's doing quite well after the repot. It was in quite a, it was in a very small pot. This is just another cutting of Australis Lisa. This cutting looks like it's got a bunch of questionable roots that I'm going to clean up really fast. Trying to get all the hair-like strands that are dead. You don't want to leave the strands behind because they're not going to do anything and new roots can't grow from them. I will clean up the rest of that later, so let me clean up this complete mess. Before I put all these back, all of these uh, cuttings are going to get their water changed. And finally, I have another Peperomia. This one seems to be happy. It's got lots of influences also. This one is the one that has the very thick, almost square stem. I will put the name of it at the bottom. This is in a self-watering pot in soil. I found that it was drying out really bad and it really hated it. So self-watering turned out to be a very po positive move for this plant. I don't know a lot about growing peperomia in self-watering, but this one likes it. Down on the bottom shelf is a Hoya publicalix that I've had for a very long time, almost since the beginning of my plant journey. Unfortunately, this is another one that had the attack of the mites. I have some new growth. This Hoya has some Royal Hawaiian purple mixed in it. So that's a really nice little addition. This is a little aloe I got. It feels dehydrated, honestly feels very dehydrated. I think it just needs a good watering, so I will take it to the sink and give it a very thorough watering. The last plant on this bottom shelf, I'm honestly afraid to move. This is 
a succulent, as you can see, I'll put the name on the screen. Um, it started for me as a very small little plant. It's got some babies now in the, in the pot because I propagated some of the leaves. But as you can see, it, it's just grown and grown and grown um, to, I don't need, I've never even seen one of these this big. So if you know how I'm supposed to work with this plant when it gets this big, please let me know. And lastly is a box that holds Melanochrysum cuttings and Scandapsis cuttings. Unfortunately, some of these leaves, actually a lot of these leaves, have developed nutrient deficiency spots on them. So one of the things I need to do is get my watering can and add some fertilizer to it and spray this down. Okay, so now the shelf is cleaned off. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the shelves one by one. I'll speed this part up and I'll see you when I get back. Hi, future video editing Michelle here. I wanted to say that it's about this point in the video that I realized that I didn't change the camera angle. So unfortunately, there's no video of me cleaning the next shelf. I really apologize and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Now we have everything all cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything back on. Okay, this is what the finished shelf looks like. As you can see, it's changed quite a bit since the first reiteration, or the previous one, I should say. I'll have to stand back a little for you to see the whole shelf. Thanks for joining me today as I went ahead and redid my bit stew shelf. It had been neglected for a while and I was quite disappointed in myself for how it looked. If you ever have a situation where you have to take time off for your, from your plants for physical health reasons, mental health reasons, family, work, uh, school, whatever the reason may be, take a break. Don't feel stressed, don't feel guilty. Your plants will be there when you get back. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you would like to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. If you have anything you'd like to say or any suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. I hope you have a great day. Bye.